Hi everybody and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons are 2-0 after a 63-7 victory on Saturday night in Bethany, Oklahoma over Southern Nazarene. And Ronnie Huckabee, your football team, scored on all four possessions in the opening half of play. The defense only allowed 12 uh, yards in that first half. Uh, qu quite a way to start a football game. It was a dominant performance, Billy. And a uh, beautiful night for football. Uh, very, you know, uncharacteristic of what we'd had leading up to that game. You know, it was blazing hot last week with a lot of humidity. And uh, so our guys were ready to play, which is exactly what I wanted from them. You know, we talked about before the game how, you know, really I, I was sick and tired of watching college football, watching teams that were heavily favored to, to win a football game, just go out and kind of slop through and go through the motions. And, and I asked our guys to to take the right approach to this game and, and to be us. And they did exactly what I asked them to do. And it was uh, it was a really good night for Harding football. Now we can we still have a lot of improvement that we can make over that performance, but it was a dominant performance. I was on the field before the game and I could see that on with the team. They were very, very prepared. You could see that they were focused. Uh, did that have something to do with the talk, with what you were talking about? Of, of going out and taking care of business on the road. It's never easy to win on the road. Right. I honestly believe that it was due to the approach that we took during the entire week of practice and the way our older guys led us during that time. Uh, like I said, we had some you know, really brutal conditions for practicing football and full pads on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week. And uh, you could tell. You could tell in our team prayer time before we actually get practice going that we had our our guys were, were focused. They wanted to get out there and improve and take care of business. We knew that we needed to make improvement from the previous week. So uh, I was I was really pr pleased with that. All right, we are glad that you are with us this week for Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We have, have a lot of highlights to get to, and we'll start that with first half highlights right after this. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky. But, but he's, he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. Oh. Oh. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. <clears throat> Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons made their first road trip of the season this past weekend and went to Bethany, Oklahoma and played really well in the first half and the second half, a complete performance. Then the Bisons in the all-white uh, uniforms and coach looked outstanding on what was a beautiful night in Bethany on Saturday night. Yeah, Billy, I love the all-white. I, I think it's a really good look for us and the kids like it too. And, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good contrast with the all-black helmet. But we start off with our defense on the field and look at those guys flying around, and that's that's exactly the way they played. And uh, you know, we ended up with the ball after a a botched punt by them, where their punter uh, took a knee as he was feeling the ball. So we got the ball on the 18-yard line, run a couple of plays, and Park gets in on the on the quarterback follow, and and it's you know that's where you want to start. And that would begin a very big night for Park Parish. First right. of three touchdowns, he rushed for over 100 yards on the night. It did, and uh, here we go again. You can see they're trying to get to the perimeter of our defense, and you know we have some guys that can really fly. Uh, good pressure on the quarterback, cause him to bring the ball down and attempt to run it, and we're all over him. This is off tackle play to Dwayne Carter. Good blocking up in front of him, and uh, you know we did not have a ton of big plays in the first half offensively. We just methodically drove the ball down, ate up the clock, and you can see, you know, we're getting five here, nine here, and uh, you know, here we are down on the on the goal line, and we hand the ball to Mike, and uh, he, you know, he breaks a tackle and gets in the end zone, and we're up 14 to nothing. And the first first quarter is almost gone. 
it feels like I say a lot of times, Michael Latu breaks a tackle and then continues on. He does that a lot, doesn't he? He does a great job with yards after contact, which is what you need to add to your be back in this offense. Bison's up 14 nothing as we head into the second quarter. You can see that uh, you know these guys, as you said a while ago, Billy, had 12 total yards in the first half, and uh, you know we're all over them, putting pressure on the quarterback. He doesn't have any time to throw. We run the toss play right there to Zach Shelley, and uh, he converts a first down for us. Hands off again to Michael, uh, you know, and that's a 12-yard gain, and that seemed to be the way, as I said a while ago, most of our drives went. Good block out in front of, of Eric Kelly by Zach Shelley, and uh, that's a really good run. Gets us down into the red zone, and then park again on the quarterback, Fala, which has been a real good play for us this year. And, you know, and Tristan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he converted nine extra points, and uh, that's what you want to see out of your field goal extra point team. This was a great job because this was third and short. We had a little penetration in the backfield. Park pulled it down and converted the first down. And now we got to pitch out to Eric Simmons. And, you know, Eric, as we continue to say, is very dynamic with the ball in his hands. And uh, he did a great job on that one. Yeah, Park Parrish, 106 yards, eight yards per carry. Right. The toss to Eric Simmons, great blocking out in front. And he scores untouched. And now we're up 21 to nothing. <clears throat> Deontay Garrett with his first sack of the Deontay season. Deontay had a had a great game. A lot of pressure on the on the quarterback. There's Benjamin Shields with a really good stop, and that's kind of the end. The way the, the first half ended. Uh, pretty dominant performance, as we said earlier. Yeah, and the Bisons up 28 nothing at this point. You had to feel good going into the halftime locker room, obviously up 28 nothing, but not just the score, but I thought the way that your team had dominated really the first half. And, you know, we played a really clean first half. And, you know, we there was no indication from watching our football team play, as far as I was concerned, that we had any problem with a lack of focus. Uh, you know, those guys went out there very businesslike, as we said earlier, and and took care of things and we, you know, we executed on offense. Uh, we talked about the fact that we didn't have any really long, super long scoring plays, uh, but we were able to maintain control of the ball for four drives, even though one of them was very short. And to me, that's an indication that you're executing offensively as you should. Now, when we go, as, as always, when we go back and look at the film, we're like, yeah, you know, we can be a lot better than this. You know, we can execute a lot better. We can, uh, you know, we can get more hats on on hats and, and, and give us some of those more explosive plays. But my feeling going into halftime was a good feeling. In, in watching the game, it looked like an experienced team on the road because, again, we talk about trying to win on the road, and it looked like a business-like team uh, with as many starters as you do have back and so many seniors and juniors on this team. I think that's a great way to characterize it, that uh, because of our leadership, these guys are, are not going to be distracted. They're not going to get caught up in, hey, we're this and they're that and all that kind of stuff, which will get you beat anyway. And it plays out week after week after week in college football. I really believe that this group understands that this is, this is a week-long season. Every week is a season. And uh, you have to approach it that way. If you don't, then you're going to live with the consequences, and those normally are not very good. Okay, again, the Bison's up 28 to nothing at this point in the show. Stay with us. We'll come back and look at third quarter highlights and, and fourth quarter highlights right after this. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. 
You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee as we get ready to look at third quarter highlights. The Bisons are up 28-0 at this point in the game, and we start the second, ha second half. 60s as we begin. A bang, and the longest return in school history coming right here, Coach, from Corey Bassett. And I'm so proud of this entire team led by Coach Roddy Moat, who's been working with our kickoff return team. And you can see the, the way those guys are working out in front of Corey. And he hits a crease, and he has fantastic speed. And uh, the result is the longest kickoff return in school history. And, you know, that's something that's shared by that entire team because Corey would not have had that, uh, that lane to run in if it hadn't been for the hard work of the guys up in front of him. Very proud of that group. And you talked about his speed. As soon as he got to midfield, you knew he was gone. Yeah, yeah, it, it, was, it was obvious. And then we turn around and we get a, a turnover on the ensuing kickoff. And so we've got the ball right back after scoring on the kickoff return. And on the very first play, we run the triple, and Park hits a crease. He's got guys working hard out in front of him, and it's a 33-yard touchdown. And we voted that as a coaching staff as, as the offensive play of the week. We gave that whole, that entire team that was on the field offensive player of the week. Yeah, Park really had an escort in and we, the end zone. Here's a big right. Play. Yeah, Trayvon Biglow is all over the quarterback, causes a fumble, Dalen Markham, is pursuing and gets the ball on the bounce and takes it in for a defensive touchdown. So in a period of one and a half minutes, we've scored three touchdowns and basically put the game out of reach. Well, this is Terrence Dingle in at quarterback who we have a tremendous amount of confidence in. And I told Terrence he felt terrible about that play, but I told him, Terrence, I'm glad that happened because you, know, you need those kind of live reps uh, because that's going to make you a better quarterback, and, and you know Terrence responded in the right way. Although he did, fit, you know, he felt really bad about that. Terrence Olds with Southern Nazarene's only score of the evening, right there. And then we come back, and this was what I was really pleased with: is, is Terrence came in after that bad play, and he did not let it affect his performance. He ran the offense in a great way, made really good reads, good decisions. And you can see that we're getting the triple option going. And this is the midline triple. Hands it off and Romar reads. Man, what a freshman uh, running back he has been for us. We're so proud of him. He is very dynamic with the ball in his hands. And this is Grant Kimberlin. Grant has fantastic speed too. He's a guy that a lot of our fans don't know about because it's his first year with us. And uh, he's gonna make a big difference for the Bisons this year. Hand the ball off to Romar on the off tackle play and he takes it in for a touchdown and we get another Extra point conversion, and with six minutes left in the third quarter, we're up 56 to seven. Now, these are a lot of our guys that are playing out there now that are, you know, second unit guys, but they're super important to us because we plan on playing them all year long and playing a lot of guys on defense, and they're getting good reps. That was Romar again, and this is a counter play to Colby Webb. Uh, you know, Kobe is a great blocker that doesn't carry the ball a whole lot, but he did a good job the other night. Look at that balance by Romar. Uh, you know, that's tremendous right there for a young running back. Bases and controls. We go into the fourth quarter with 56 yeah. points already. And now hands off to Romar. And, you, you know, at this point, uh, you know, we're pretty much able to do what we want to offensively and, and, uh, you know, Romar again with a touchdown run. The defense never slowed down, did they? I mean, they were relentless all evening. Yeah, and the great thing about that is what I said a while ago. There's a strip of the ball uh, by our guys, and, and uh, that's Isaiah Jefferson with his second fumble recovery of the night, which is huge for us. And uh, this is Dakota Inslee in there at quarterback, uh, doing a great job for us. And the ball off to Romar on the first play, and that's the counter play again. Toss to Grant Kimberlin. Kobe Webb out in front with a great block, and Grant gets down the sideline. You can see his burst right there. He really has got great speed. This is Dakota on the quarterback, Fala. And these guys are doing a great job of running the clock out. Hand the ball off to Grant on the counter play which is, is, is a really good addition to our offense. This is Romar again on a great run. 
and then we're able to run the clock out, uh, and that's the end of the football game. Well, the Bisons with a 63-7 to victory and a great scene. I always love to see the, the prayer and, and you with the ball team after a win on the road to look down there and just a magnificent side. You mentioned uh, Isaiah Jefferson with the two fumble recoveries. That's the first time that a Bison has done that since Jason Thomason did it back against uh, Missouri Southern in 2009. Right. And Isaiah is, is one of those guys that he's, he seems to be around the ball a lot, which we like out of our defensive backs. We like out of all of our defensive personnel, but he's got a little knack for that, and we hope he keeps that up. Yeah, and how about Romar Reeds? I mean, how important was it for him to get that much playing time in the second half and to carry the football uh, 12 times, over 100 yards, and, and getting some great experience? He scored two touchdowns. What you see with Romar is a guy who's very natural with the ball in his hands. And it, as you and I were talking about before we actually started filming the show, uh, he's great yards after contact. I mean, you, he, he takes the hit. He stays on his feet. He's got tremendous balance. The one run that we, that we talked about with, uh, you know, when he broke the run off tackle, stayed on his feet, uh, got hit from the side, put his hand down on the ground. You know, you, that's natural. You know, we're not teaching that. And uh, we're, we're very, very pleased with him. And that just gives us additional production out of the B-back spot, which, as you know, is, is where this offense goes through. I mean, it, it goes through the B-back every single time. So we're really proud of Romar. And the first time in school history that a Bison team didn't punt the football in a game. Yeah, I can't say that I've ever been a part of that before, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll certainly take it yeah. uh, as long as we're not turning it over. Right. <laughs> right. And then also one other thing I wanted you to talk about that I thought was very important, we talk about depth. You need that as the season goes on. We're in week three right now. 22 players on defense had at least one tackle in the football game on Saturday. And we only played 44 snaps on defense. So the fact that we were able to play that many guys and they were able to get quality reps and uh, still with – playing basically our entire defensive football team that traveled with us, we held them to 67 total yards. So that's, you know, that is a dominating performance by our entire defense, which I was very proud of. All right, the Bison's a winner in week two, and we will start looking ahead to week three a little bit later on in the show. But right now, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will look at other scores around the Great American Conference and the conference standings when Harding football, when this week uh, in Harding football with Ronnie Huckabee continues in a moment. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him? What not to hit. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons, one of only three teams now un unbeaten in the conference. Harding, Henderson State, and Southern Arkansas all at 2-0. and And uh, it just tells you, I think, the, what a race this is going to be because there are some very good teams at 1-1 one one, uh, in the conference standings. Without a doubt, and I think, you know, as, as coaches in the conference, we recognized at the very beginning that we were going to have a very tight conference race. And one loss is not going to put you out of contention. And who knows what it'll look like as we progress through the, you know, through the season as far as how things will break. You know, being able to stay healthy and continue to compete in that way is going to be super, super important. So, uh, wide open race in my opinion. All right, and one of those 2-0 and o teams coming to town this week. And after this break, we'll come back and talk about this week's game with Southern Arkansas. And also get a question from a fan for Coach after this break.
explore dozens of complex subjects, but sometimes the world sees college students as being the same, lumps us together. That's okay, because the world may underestimate what we can do as strong, responsible, highly trained and confident Christian professionals. And isn't that what the world needs? Qualities taught one-on-one -on -one and valued by us all in a place of faith, learning and living. Harding University. Back on Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. This week's question coming in right now from a fan. I always love to hear Coach interact with the fans, and we'll hear what the question is this week right now. Hi, Coach Huckabee. I'm Hannah Gann from Louisiana. Have you ever coached in a game where you had zero passing yards? That's a great question. That gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit about the nature of our offense, yeah. which is uh, – we're going to take what the defense give, gives us. And I know that sounds like coach speak, but it's the truth. Uh, in this offense, if we're getting soft coverage in the secondary and uh, they don't have enough people deployed at the line of scrimmage to defend the run, then we're going to run the ball all night long. Because our passing game is, is, is based on what the defense is doing in the secondary. If they're playing guys too close to the line of scrimmage, we're going to try to go over the top of them and, and hit a big play. You know, we say in our offense that we run the football and we throw it for big plays. Well, the big plays were not there in the passing game the other night, but the run game sure was. Uh, and everybody's fine with that, obviously, except for the parents of our wide receivers. And, uh, you know, we, we know that, and they know that, and those guys do a great job of accepting their role. And we also know that there'll come a point in time in this season when somebody is, is going to try to force us and force the run game. And when those times come, we've got to be able to go over the top. And we work on that really hard every day. And the Bisons rushed for 478 yards in the victory on Saturday night. Now we look to Southern Arkansas, and I love the game week when we start talking about the old AIC schools right. and with the fact that it's not only an, an, another AIC school coming, an old AIC school coming to town, but it's a 2-0 and AIC school. That's a very good football team. And, boy, the last few years the Bisons and Mule Riders have had some dandy football games. We sure have. And I can still hear in, in my head, I can hear Coach Prox saying, Boys, this week we're going to play Southern State. <laughs> and, uh, you know, of course, you go back to Coach Rip Powell, who's a legendary coach down there. And, and uh, <clears throat> when you go back 43 years like I do, you have all those memories every week when we play an old AIC opponent. This is a really good football team that Coach Keppel has. Uh, you know, he's got a talented offense. He's got a core receivers that are as good as any that we've faced in a long time. And, I, you know, I talked to Coach Luke Tribble the other day, and, and he was just highly complimentary of their receiving core. Uh, they have a couple of starters returning from their offensive line last year, very big guys, uh, and Barrett Renner is, is obviously one of the premier quarterbacks in Division II. And they have a guy behind him named Will Haynes that's also very impressive. They've got a big running back who uh, you know is about 250 pounds, and, and he's very he, he has great balance and runs the ball tough. So, they bring a formidable challenge for our defense. By the same token, they have great speed on their defense. And uh, they have guys that can really run and hit, and so we'll have to be executing at the top of our game in order to, in order to beat these guys. And, and we know we have our work cut out for us, and that's the approach we're going to take uh, to practice this week. This will be a great week of practice because our guys will have their full attention. And we talked a couple of weeks ago, the atmosphere, at First Security Stadium two weeks ago was outstanding. And I know you'd love to see everyone come out early, tailgate, get ready for the football game, because this is a big football game early in the season. It's a big game, and, and uh, you know, I would fully expect it to be a great football game. And I hope our, our fans will show up like they did for that first game, even more so. You know, uh, two 2-0 two and o teams, uh, you know, fighting for their lives in the JAC Conference race. And, and uh, man, there'll be a lot of passion and intensity on that field this Saturday night. All right, Coach, always great to be with you. Have a great week, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you, Billy. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We hope to see you at First Security Stadium on Saturday. We'll talk to you next time.